Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Bhagya Prasad. Uh, I'm a director of engineering at Tarista. I'm also responsible for uh, Agni products architecture and engineering. So I'm uh, happy to be here and excited to present uh, Cloud Vision Agni, uh, the product capabilities, what it has to offer, some of the use cases, what we address, and uh, so on and so forth. So in terms of uh, Arista's Cloud Vision product, as uh, Shri mentioned, uh, the product Cloud Vision Agni, so we have built it and we have architected with uh, as a cloud native solution. So we have built it ground up, uh, made up of a bunch of uh, microservices. You know, uh, these microservices are responsible for handling a specific functionality of the product. And it is uh, globally distributed uh, with all the uh, geo redundancy built into the product. So uh, just to take care of uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the scenarios where it is necessary to route the traffic from one location to another location. And it is uh, highly available. So this is the flexibility uh, the cloud product provides, uh, you know, when it is, uh, 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 when it is made up of uh, microservices architecture and each microservices can be spawned uh, depending on uh, the load. You can actually go up, scale up and scale down depending on uh, uh, the density of the traffic and how uh, we are handling the authentication request. And one thing also we have added uh, uh, much more is uh, in terms of uh, the observability and the way uh, and the metrics that is actually uh, sent from the system and with this uh, uh, the SRE team provides a complete 24 cross 7 operations and making sure that the system is up and running and we have automated majority of the alerts to keep track of how uh, the system is behaving uh, you know in its course so how does it interact with um, uh, some of the network access devices so Arista's uh, wireless and uh, wired infrastructure uh, support uh, native RATSEC. So Agni uh, you know, uh, establishes RATSEC communication with access point and switch. So uh, it's RATSEC, as we all know, it's an MTLS-based, highly secure TCP, a persistent tunnel that exists between both the endpoints. And you know, uh, the client's authentication and credentials are passed through uh, this RATSEC tunnel. So you may ask a question, what about uh, third-party uh, network devices? So with Agni, you can actually directly terminate, uh, you know, uh, RATSEC even with uh, third-party network access devices. So be it an access point or a switch, because RATSEC is a well-known, uh, uh, you know, industry standard RFC-based protocol. So Agni natively terminates, uh, you know, uh, RATSEC connectivity even with third-party network vendors without requiring any, you know, edge device to be installed on premises. So this is a great differentiator. The reason for this is also how many devices you want to deploy in the network, uh, you know, apart from your access point and switch. And at the same time, you know, you're also avoiding uh, a, a new point of uh, a troubleshooting or a failure domain uh, by not doing so, because uh, it's a RATSEC, is a well-compliant protocol. However, there are scenarios. For example, uh, another scenario is, you know, you may have a legacy access point or a legacy switch that doesn't support RATSEC. How does Agni interact? So those scenarios, you know, they do radius and you may introduce a proxy device that translates radius to RADSEC and talks to Agni and that's how you manage. Does Arista provide that RADSEC or is there an offering for that RADSEC proxy? Great, great question. In fact, uh, uh, Arista's, uh, you know, 7XX series switch, uh, access switches also have a RADSEC proxy module. So there is always an option for customers to install that module and drop it into your network, and that would, uh, you know, translate all your radius to RADSEC communication and turn it. Can I is it a physical mod? Sorry. Yep. Uh, can I RADSEC proxy also offer like a failover mode for when internet failure happens and I can Absol get to your cloud? Absolutely. Uh, that's a great question. In fact, I have a complete slide in Agni how we offer auth survivability, and I'm going to talk in like next uh, few minutes if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in terms of identity providers, so a typical responsibility of uh, a NAC solution is also, uh, you know, uh, to authenticate and authorize. And certainly when I talk about identity, it translates many things. I'm a Bob and I'm using my laptop. So I have an email, this is my identity, and my laptop has a MAC address, you know, it has its own identity. So Agni has a way of uh, authorizing this identity by interacting with the identity providers, fetching the group's attributes and making them available into Agni's ecosystem and policies so that you can craft granular policies and define your network segmentation. So we support, uh, you know, Okta One Login, Google Workspace, Azure suite of products, Shibboleth, SAML, Ping Identity, and the list is pretty big. 
and is also extensive just to cover the wide variety of uh, identity providers that are being used in the industry. Secondly, we are very protocol compliant. You know, we speak to identity providers through SAML, OIDC, OAuth, T.O for authentication and authorization workflows. We integrate with the several MDM solutions and we also integrate with endpoint security. Do you support uh, third-party VSIs? Uh, third party, yes, we, we do. We do support third party VSS as well. Yes. So in terms of core capabilities, you know, uh, typical cap uh, capability of uh, a triple S solution is also onboarding. Uh, we have our own uh, PKI, a self registration uh, with UPSK. UPSK is a very powerful, innovative feature from Arista and my colleague Superna, uh, who heads uh, the solutions manager managing aspects. And Arista is going to talk a deep dive into UPSK. Uh, several integrations with the MDM. Uh, basic AAA capabilities, you know, uh, RATSEC, keep TLS for .NET X, uh, MAC bypass authentication, and one more thing. So whenever I talk about uh, onboarding solution, uh, you know, onboarding is, you know, a, it's a process where you have a client and, uh, you know, you authenticate the client and make the device or a provision a credential sent to the client. It's basically pretty much, you know, installing a certificate under the client. What we have done is we have taken a utmost security into the picture. Uh, we make sure that a generation of a client certificate translates to generating a private key and a CSR and transporting it over the wire. We make sure that private key never leaves the box. So that is one of the security aspect and the differentiator in Agni's native PKI, which we have built. Um, access control, uh, you know, uh, traditional, all the uh, VSS, you know, DACL, ACL, VLAN, MSSG. MSSG is another key Arista feature. Uh, UPSK based enforcement. The system also does uh, uh, device fingerprinting, helps you identify type of device and you can uh, frame your segment rules. We also integrate with third party solutions that provide much more wider uh, richness in, uh, uh, in the profiling of IoT and medical devices also. And system does continuous posture, uh, which I'll mention here. So with this, uh, what I will do is I will walk through some of uh, uh, the UI elements. So to launch Agni, so what you would do is you log into, you know, Arista's uh, launchpad and there is a, there is a tile, uh, you know, you, you normally click and you land in uh, the dashboard. So this is Agni's uh, dashboard and what we have built with our, uh, you know, API first architecture is um, the list of concourse plugins. So um, as I said, it's a cloud native architecture and one thing we also did as a part of, uh, you know, designing and architecting Agni is also make it uh, API uh, friendly. So we have, uh, you know, all the configuration elements, what you see, you know, over here is also available uh, through a first class APIs, open API 3.0 spec uh, with Swagger documentation. And this is pretty much available for any customer to use and, you know, script. So question, these installed apps, they represent integrations you guys have today working out of the box. Yep. So you already talked to Intune and you already talked to Jam. Wonderful. That's correct. That's exactly correct. Yes. So we speak to Intune, Jam, FC. Uh, typically, you know, Agni has its own PKI, but uh, you know, um, uh, onboarding is a solved problem in the industry. So customers have invested time, money, and resources in building their own PKI. Are using external services, so Agni can actually use, uh, you know, interact with external PKI and also authenticate your users along with its, you know, the native PKI. So if you have uh, MDM vendors, uh, Jamf, Consi, Microsoft Intune, so Agni can actually, you know, you can integrate with those solutions as well, and you can use those solutions to push profiles onto the clients, and Agni can also learn about all the managed devices from those vendors. You know, uh, the advantage with that is, you know, you have flexibility to use those attributes in the segment policies and you can drive your user authentication. Agni integrates with a lot more endpoint production like Cortex XDR, Arista NDR, and several of the EDR solutions. So these are industry standard solutions that are available and they know more about uh, the clients that are connecting to the network. I'll give you an example. So you have user Bob connects to the network at time T0 and he's on the network until time T5. At the time of connectivity, you know, Bob is healthy. However, over a period of time, he transitioned from healthy to quarantine or risky, primarily because he went to a website, you know, that resulted in downloading a malware and, uh, you know, the, so, uh, and he ended up compromising his session. So how does an XDR, EDR, NDR solution, they detect this activity, they call into Agni, showcasing his specific IP address or the specific device is infected. 
And Agni can understand based on that event, take an appropriate action and drive the client off the network through a change of authorization or label the client so that until the client is remediated, he cannot get back to the network. So this is the whole a continuous posture uh, story which Agni provides to customers, making sure authentication and security is not at the time of uh, you know coming onto the network at T0, but eventually until the client is on the network and ensuring uh, you know uh, they secure the network uh, without getting into any of the network compromises. So Agni also integrates with uh, several of Arista products natively. So one such integration is a CVQ plugin. So CVQ is a platform, network management platform, uh, which Arista uh, provides for customers to manage your access points and also switches. The advantage of this is in the past, you know, um, uh, uh, in, in the NAC, NAC products that are out today, so as I said, uh, we have an access point and a switch, they need to talk to Agni um, to establish RATSEC connectivity, so on and so forth. For any NAC product to talk to access point and the switch, it needs to know uh, the IP address and the device details. So what CVQ plugin does is, once you install this plugin, installation is pretty simple. Provide the API keys, and once you install this plugin, Agni automatically pulls in all the devices that are being managed by uh, the CVQ into Agni. So this includes uh, the MAC address, the location aspects, and all the other details, you know, all these things automatically available with a single uh, click of uh, a button and one integration. And also note the green dot on the right side. Uh, you know, this means that if you have configured the access point and switch talk to Agni, it will automatically establish a RATSEC connectivity and the tunnel is up. So when the tunnel is up, all you have to do is, you know, ensure you connect the client and it starts authenticating and uh, we are good, good to go. And Agni is a multi-vendor solution. This is another uh, differentiation uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, Agni, uh, you know, we interact with, as I said, uh, any vendor that supports RATSEC without requiring any specific edge device. So we support all the, uh, you know, industry uh, uh, access point and the switches. There is also a generic option. So any device that is not listed here can support RATSEC. You can still continue to work by adding it as a generic device. And uh, in terms of the identity providers, you know, we have a rich uh, set of identity providers uh, we support. So the use case surrounding an identity provider is, uh, you know, um, so this is where all the user repository, the group repository information uh, that exists uh, for your organization. So once you enable this integration, what Agni does is it fetches uh, the group information, the user attributes, and make them available. And the same groups are also available for you to use in the segment policies. So you can craft policies like, you know, if someone is authenticating and he's an employee group, I will drive him to VLAN corporate. And if someone is authenticating, he belongs to a different segment, maybe a system administrator, I give you a much more broader and granular access. So those are the use cases. So, uh, and the other thing is, you know, when, whenever we talk about identity, um, uh, uh, you know, there is a user component and also a device component. So what we have done in Agni is uh, showcase these two components, you know, together. So for example, uh, I mean, uh, so in this case, a user Alice Jones, you know, um, he belongs to a company, is an employee, and is also belongs to a HR and employee group. So this is automatically visible once authenticated. And we also have visibility into how many devices Alice is using and what are those device types. So uh, this gives, as a network administrator, complete visibility into a specific user and the type of the devices the user is coming from and you know the type of the device as well so without having to craft or go to multiple places to you know uh, go look at the client and uh, look at the user and try to tie in somewhere else so this is another uh, improvement uh, and sophistication we have developed so another thing i would like to highlight here is uh, our concept of <coughs> networks so think of a network as a way to, you know, how you want your client to be connected to your enterprise. You know, there are typically three ways, right? So we have a wired devices, uh, you know, you plug into the wired port, uh, they do either TLS or mic bypass authentication. That is a wired is a network. There is also a wireless network where you connect, uh, you know, BOID devices, uh, maybe a UPSK. And uh, there is also a uh, wireless network for all the corporate devices. So what we have done is uh, simplified the whole workflow. So if your intention is to uh, craft a wired authentication, you can just choose an option. In fact, you can provide a name and the MAC authentication as it exists, and you can just add the network. So the system is ready to honor all the MAC, by MAC bypass authentications 
with a simple click of a button. If, you, if your intention is to do a TLS-based authentication, you can do so. And you know, as, as any other uh, device, if you connect a printer that doesn't do dot one x which is TLS, so you can actually decide to fall back to Mac, you could also do with a toggle of a button, and that's how you can actually change your configuration. Similarly, for uh, you know, uh, the wireless devices, uh, we have options for TLS, UPSK, uh, captive portal, mic bias, bias authentication, so on and so forth. So the other last thing I'd like to show. So question on that, sure. so UPSK. So is that, um, so given the platforms you said you support, if I've provisioned like an access point as being, for example, a, a Cisco access point or a Juniper access point, you guys will send the, you know, will do the right thing when talking to it in the, in the sense that you can support all, how all the different vendors have chosen to implement that that feature or that that concept? Yep, yep. Uh, so I'd like to answer it in a bit differently. So UPSK is a unique feature for Aristos access points. Right. However, every other vendor out there uh, does support some form of, you know, an alphabet followed by a PSK. Some call it IPSK, DPSK, yes. Right. So end of the day, it's a uh, vendor specific attribute what we have to send and we do support with other third party vendors, those PSK features also. The uniqueness about uh, Agni uh, UPSK feature along with Aristos access points is in terms of um, the scale. So remember, many of the vendor specific uh, PSKs what they implement, the scale is actually limited to the form factor of your access point. But here, the UPSK lifecycle management is actually managed in Agni and you get a cloud scale. So with that, uh, you know, uh, Agni can manage like hundreds, you know, uh, 50, 100,000 or thousands of uh, uh, UPSKs without any trouble. And the other aspect with respect to UPSK, which Superna will talk in detail with respect to private user group VLANs, which is very, very unique to Arista. So you can keep the network flat and you know you can keep your VLAN flat, no need to configure any ACL, but you could still make sure uh, UPSK of one user will not talk to UPSK of another and provides that extra layer of wireless security. So in terms of the segments, so this is the place, you know, uh, you can always ask a question, hey, I formed a network, my devices are connecting, how do I authorize and get them onto uh, a specific network segment? So here is a very simple workflow where uh, all we are saying here is, you know, I am, uh, you know, if form a corporate access policy in such a way that it just a, it's a, just an example, if anyone is connecting to a specific network and user group happens to be an employee, then you know just assign a VLAN. You could also optionally, you could also frame conditions like you know if user is coming from a specific location, and uh, you know yet another attribute, the client device type is something else. Based on whatever we have learned, you can actually add your enforcement. We support wide variety of enforcement. We do support a downloadable ACL, the traditional ACL, and we do support uh, a more powerful uh, you know Arista MSSG enforcement, a generic radius IETF attribute. For example, if you want to specify a session timeout, you could also do that. So all those capabilities exist in the product. Again, this enforcement is, again, uh, the protocol specific uh, yeah, richness is what we have uh, introduced into the system. And similarly to the IoT, you know, BOD devices, you could also provide access to the IoT devices as well. And, you know, this is how it works. And one thing I would like to highlight here is, uh, you see um, uh, a policy based out of Medigate. So this is uh, the power of um, the concourse architecture what we have. So the, any concourse application you enable within Agni. So all the attributes of those concourse applications, be it JAMF, be it Medigate, or be it uh, Cortex XDR, they are available as a first class entity in the policy. As if, you know, so with that, uh, you have flexibility to use all the attributes provided by an external application into Agni and craft first class policies so you have much more you know, granular uh, decisions you can make based on how you want your segment uh, to be uh, routed into the network. So, When we talked about other NAC solutions in the cloud, there's always a concern around latency. Okay. Um, and so I'd like you to, I'd, I'd like your comment on latency, specifically around authentication. Correct. And then I'd like you to dive a little bit more into Richard's question around survivability and the Absolutely. Of it. Great, great questions. Yes, I'll, I'll try to answer the, those questions as well. So in terms of, um, the latency, yes, uh, you know, there is, um, there could be scenarios uh, where depending on your location, there could be a latency to reach the AAA service. And I would like to divide that question into two folds. You know, what happens to, uh, when you authenticate first time and what happens when you roam, right? So those two are the key aspects whenever we talk about latency. 
Based on our metrics, you know, we have our solutions uh, deployed in uh, several regions in the US and we have our uh, field trials and experimentations going all the, all the way across, uh, you know, other regions uh, in other continents also, for example, New Zealand, Australia, so on and so forth. There have been a perceptible latency 300, 400 milliseconds, but establishing UPS carrier TLS connection is seamless, you know, it will, uh, it will still work. However, there are scenarios, for example, Hey, authentication is great. You know, I I have this uh, you know Zoom call going on my phone. I walk from one location or one to another. You know, from this room to the other room, and you know this is the time where it has to transition itself for a roaming scenario. What do I do with those? You know, how does uh, a latency impact uh, such a handoff? So Arista's access points are well equipped to handle those roaming scenarios with Lavenar, eight to Lavenar, and also fast transition slash roaming. So in which case they use, there is no re-authentication to the cloud. So they in, they use uh, whatever the mechanism to use the cache and also do a, a seamless transition. So there is actually, you know, uh, your AAA service is out of the picture at that point of time because uh, the initial authentication is already handled. And but but you don't you don't pre-flood all authentication caches to all APs everywhere, right? So the, 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 and so what if what if you walk into the building and you authenticate and then you close your laptop and you go to exactly. the other side of the building where you haven't propagated those keys, you're not going to get online if there's been a WAN outage, right? Yeah, if there, yeah, I'll answer that WAN outage question as well. You are, I mean, there are scenarios... Or latency, excuse me, latency yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, this caching has uh, a definitive time and, you know, if you are within that time period, uh, the roaming happens uh, very seamlessly. Uh, but there are other aspects to this as well. Uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, WAN outage or you're not able to reach uh, the authentication, uh, we do handle one scenario. I would like to... Yes. So, like your switch that you mentioned uh, uh, with the module, if if we have a uh, one of your switches, yes, and and you know, to kind of his point, will it cache all that more or something like that, or especially in case of like latency and uh, failure? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, certainly. So, uh, I would like to highlight this auth severability uh, question. So, let's consider several scenarios. Here's a slide. Yes, we, we, we knew this, this is going to come up. How, how can we not have the slide? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so let, let's get, uh, you know, maybe spend a few minutes onto this slide, right? So, when we started developing Agni, right? So, auth survivability is never an afterthought. You know, this is, okay, we release the product and someone asks the question, hey, do you support auth survivability? Oh, okay, we'll come back to you and then develop. No, absolutely not. We started from the ground, from the infrastructure level to support our survivability before we even uh, we started talking about uh, the design of Agni. The way we do here is, uh, you know, if client is already authenticated and uh, you know, it's on the network, if it is a wired, you know, we happily uh, use the cache in terms of AAA uh, unavailability. If it is a, a different uh, switch, you know, you roam it to a different building and obviously he'll get into a different switch. In that case, uh, switch can use uh, an auth file uh, fallback in a restricted role. So that is on the, that's great on the wired. What happens on the wireless? So same session roaming when AAA uh, uh, services is not available. Uh, new sessions, you know, uh, there are certain uh, enhancements we are uh, making, you know, that would, uh, that would enable to use uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, a survivability mode in the access point and also one of those authentications. So that is also possible. And, uh, you know, um, if uh, if any of these things uh, scenario, so this is the beauty about the RATSEC, right? So unlike RADIUS, I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, I said it's a persistent TCP tunnel between uh, switch uh, access point and uh, uh, Agni. The moment a tunnel breaks, both the parties know each other, here's something wrong. So unlike RADIUS, you don't have to wait, uh, you get an authentication, send it to RADIUS server, and AP thinks, hey, I didn't receive any response for five seconds, let me retry one more time. That never happens in access points when they're using RATSEC. The moment it detects a tunnel failure, it always it switches on to a survivability mode and you know start using the survivability mode to authenticate and admit the client. So this one, we well thought through before designing Agni and started to build this infrastructure within the uh, Arista's uh, Wi-Fi and wired uh, you know portfolio. And, and Sam, just to answer one of your questions, I just a question about um, two things. One is when you close your laptop, what happens uh, if you're using UPSK? Uh, that the UPSK um, uh, credits are crashed, uh, you know, uh, cache across all the APs in the site. So no matter if you move from one building to another building, using our, you know, smart distributed architecture, we, we cache it. Uh, we cache it for 12 hours. Uh, that's configurable, but that seems to be pretty good enough. Uh, for those EAP TLS, right, when, you, when you're moving, like when using a certificate, and then when you're, uh, you know, moving from one building to another, you close, the, the fast roaming doesn't work, they're not using the same, same creds. Um, we are... 
uh, working on a solution uh, uh, where you know uh, if if there's a client that is already authenticated in the network, uh, we are looking at uh, doing uh, you know terminating that session. And when we realize that the ratsec is down, we're looking at terminating that session within the uh, within, within local the local network. Yeah, local yeah. network. Okay. So and then and 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 but then we we are also looking at if you know uh, Agni is not available uh, in that mode, we'll probably give the user a restricted access. Maybe you know get to the internet. Um, uh, you know, uh, like uh, allow flexible ways of you know uh, figuring out or, or controlling how the device connects. Yeah, so that, okay. we are working on that solution. Okay. So, uh, quick question: the the, the slightly grayed out check boxes. Yeah. Yep. Means it it doesn't work, right? Yeah. No. So it's a, it's it's actually a solution in progress. We are we are working on it. Uh, yeah, but it's potentially by it GA. It may not 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 be available, but we are we are so. Right now, the product is an EFT, right? Uh, early field trials. Um, we've had like a lot of customers, uh, uh, you know, uh, on on EFT right now. The ones that are in uh, light green, they are work in progress, and that's something that we will address. But we know it's a problem that we need to address, and we're working on. I, I would then say, okay, on the roadmap and add okay. a Q4 because this is like, yeah, maybe the people online are not seeing this as clearly and. Like, oh, yeah. everything's working. I, I didn't and, think yeah. it was green and a little bit slightly. Yeah, no, I, 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 I it <laughs> great feedback. Sure, yeah. yeah. Not, not to, you know, I, I think we just want to put this right up front because I knew this is a question that was going to come up, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, and, and like, this is, you know, uh, absolutely when you started building, um, uh, we, we always knew this was going to come up. So, yeah. yep. So, the other thing is that, so terminating, terminating e directly on the access point, fine with that. You're going to be able to do that with your access points. Correct. You're not going to be able to right. require other vendors to support that. So, so it's some of this WAN survivability function will be platform dependent. Does the platform support? Now, in a, to address Sam's latency concerns, are you considering? I mean, you know, if 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 EAP TLS termination on the access point is possible, are you considering that as being the operational normal state, which would then obviously reduce latency considerably? Where I create the policy on, on the cloud side, access points download it, they download the certificate trust setting so they know which certificates to trust and go from there. Yeah, so so John, I think the, f the first time when Agni is up, we definitely want the Agni to be the you know source of authenticator uh, because uh, that has a lot more context about the user, right, about the device that, you know, that authenticates into the network. You know, uh, because like, like, you know, Bhagya mentioned, I mean, if you look at any NAC solution, right, uh, it has to work with multiple other components, you know, MDM, endpoint security, um, uh, you know, device profiling, and that context is available on your Nagni. And a, a, a key part of our solution is to be able to craft policies by bringing all those contexts, and that's not available locally on the site, uh, on the AP. And and that's, uh, you know, that's the reason why, you know, uh, our, our first uh, order of authentication will be with uh, with CV Agni, CloudVision Agni, and then this will really be treated as a as a as a fallback mechanism. In, but you so could also authenticate the user, and then while you're performing all those posture assessments, deauth them or send a COA if you had to in order to contain the user yep. afterwards, so that the user isn't stuck. Because clients will eventually time out, right? They'll yep. you know if, if this process takes too long, the client will just give up, and yeah. you get a one sixty nine two fifty four, and you call in the help desk saying the Wi Fi is down. Yeah, jo um, John, potentially yes, that's that's. It's so a valid, valid feedback. Uh, so far, in all the EFTs that we've been doing, we have not really seen a scenario where the client, you know, uh, is 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 timing out because of like van. Um, but that's that's a valid consideration. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cer certainly, I think uh, we'll uh, we'll have to approach case by case basis, uh, depending on what works best. Uh, we'll we'll have to take take that up. Sure. So, um, so that's the dashboard for Agni, right? Uh, uh, this is the policy where you configure uh, segments. The dashboard for Agni is here, where you troubleshoot the user, for that matter. Uh, okay. This is this is. Does this also hook into like? I mean, if I'm using Arista Wireless and right. I'm using, I'm I'm, I'm on, I'm, I'm I'm in in that. I mean, that's is that a separate dashboard? Yeah. Or? So, um, so two things. One is, uh, you know, like I said before, this is built on CloudVision platform, right? Okay. And um, you know, just to give some context, right? So. Uh, so if uh, our strategy and vision with CV Agni is not to just restrict to uh, NAC use cases on campus. Uh, this will have a broader application. Uh, that's our vision uh, across data center, across VAN. Um, you know, and and that's why we didn't kind of uh, you know name it NAC. Uh, we named it you know next an identity solution because we think that 
it's it's we have a broader application for this uh, for this product. Um, so from that perspective, um, uh, two things. One is this is built on Cloud Vision, which means all the data from NetVision, like from from Agni, is stored in the same data lake. So think of this as another app sitting on the same data lake that is going to pull uh, feed into that data lake. And then every other app can also pull in, you know, the same information. So what you'll see is when Superna shows our wireless dashboard. Uh, remember, we show the client journey where we say, "Hey, the client failed because of auth." And if the radius server is pointing to Agni, we will be able to pull additional information and tell you why the client failed. Right? Is it because of bad certificate? Is it because certificate expired? Is it because Agni's policy? you know, uh, de-authenticated. So okay. that context will be available. So I'm not going to have to, be constantly switching back and forth between two dashboards, I can just be in the wireless dashboard and be able, it, it, because, yes. and it will pull the data from here and show it. Show it there. Absolutely. Including, yeah. I don't know, if I need to look at PCAPs, for example. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the dynamic PCAPs, PCAPs are all there. But but some for some deeper workflows, uh, uh, Ali, you'll have to, you know, th this, is, this, this is where you need to come. So there's going to be some context we'll pull in. I mean, I'm just going to be like, you know, okay. uh, uh, very, very open. And that's, that's been our strategy, right? Sure. So is, um, you know, our strategy is we want to pull as much as context as possible being shared across applications. But we also feel like, you know, these are very specific workflows for those specific use cases. So if you want to do deeper troubleshootings, you might have to, you know, uh, we'll provide launch pads. SSO, all that integration will happen, right? Like the backend, um, the same data, uh, you know, that you see there will, will be available here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the idea is pull as much, you know, context as possible in all these other other mm -hmm. services as well. Um, can you actually expand the input request attributes and output? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I'd love to do that. So certainly this is the list of attributes. It's actually, you know, uh, from one of our test systems. Uh, in fact, this list is actually big. A uh, uh, lot more authorization, certificates, so on and so forth. So anything that comes on the wire, you actually see here. And what do we, whatever the enforcement we see, uh, you know, Agni enforcers is available. So if you are not happy with any of that information, right? So we have a show locks button. And this is provides a much more verbose output, a debug output. In the past, I had been very careful in the past products uh, where I had worked not to turn on debug in production because it's going to impact performance. With Agni, we provide debug by default to the customer because we could afford to do so by running on powerful systems in the cloud. And we are passing on the benefit of this to directly to the customer. And if there is any error, uh, you know that would automatically be highlighted in red. So. Uh, Suprana, off to you. Le one last thing, sorry. Yeah. Licensing, uh, separate, I'm assuming separate SKU or? Yeah, so it's a separate SKU. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's super simple. There's just three SKUs, uh, 200 license pack, 1,000 license pack, and 5,000 license pack. Um, and, and that's it. Uh, and you, you just buy the uh, number of, uh, you know, the time period that you want to buy. Um, like one feature license, just like, you know, wireless, like one feature license, all, fe all everything is included it's going to be exactly the same. And and some of, like, so we also have a, a, a base version that's going to be available for all our Cloud Vision customers, right, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, with the base capabilities. Oh, so that'll be free? Like that'll included? be free, yep. Okay. Yeah. And then paid subscription will give you all the additional additional functionalities. But, you know, we can talk offline on what those, what those features are. Sure. Yep. And we're still working through, like, the, the product is EFT, like I said, right? Uh, we, we're hoping to launch this uh, Go GA uh, uh, sometime in Q3. Um, we're working towards it, but we're 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 getting like you know like the moment you get open up for EFT, we have so many customers and and we have so many feature requests. Uh, it's really exciting time for us with with uh, with the Snack Solution. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Suparna Dam, and I am the Solutions uh, Manager for this Agni product. So today I'm going to talk about Arista's UPSK solution. So with uh, Arista's UPSK and Agni. A single SSID is used to connect all the BYOD clients, the IoT devices, and any generic wireless clients in the network. So UPSK provides a unique PSK per user or a client group. So uh, a user can connect all his uh, devices using his unique PSK, while a second user will need his or her uh, unique PSK to, uh, to connect all his or her own clients. So. The users are all connected on the single uh, SSID on a single VLAN, but we can still achieve micro-segmentation. So clients connecting using a single PSK will be able to talk to each other across APs, but clients uh, connecting using a different PSK will not be able to talk to each other. But within the network, if there are some shared clients, we can, uh, all the user devices can still access that shared client. 
So what are the advantages? It's simplified because a single SSID can be used can be used to serve a large campus with the, all the BYOD and the IoT devices. Secondly, it's increased security because individual PSK per user and also isolation between users. And also when the user leaves the organization, uh, the administrator from Agni can deactivate the user account and then that user's PSK will become invalid and that cannot be used to connect uh, any more uh, devices to the network. Quick question, can I disable that feature, let's say, um, when the PSK, if I, if I do want them to be able to talk to each other? Uh, uh, the, no, so... The micro segmentation. So with that, uh, I mean, I think if you the, turn off sorry. the user PSK, sorry. then yes. Sorry. The, the, so, sorry, the, the, you want to turn off the feature? Yeah, absolutely. It's, yes, it's a, it is a segmentation policy, right? Okay. And, and, yeah, so, and then the, the, the one thing to note is, what is unique with this is um, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, where, like you don't need a controller, you don't need any appliance, you can have like, you know, that's our, you know, con distributed controller API architecture, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even if the clients are like belong to the same PSK group, right, are connected to different APs, uh, you know, we can enforce that segmentation, right? Uh, add the source uh, of the AP and that's like very, very unique, uh, you know, to us. I mean, really we took the whole, you know, MSSD segmentation from Wired, uh, extend that, extend that same uh, you know design philosophy into the into the AP. So literally, you can have your clients within the same PSK PSK group distributed across APs, and we will enforce that segmentation at the source. Uh, so that's that's something that's that's very unique to us. Uh, and think of this in a in a in a in a healthcare right. Like you have usually what they do is they they group medical devices, uh, similar medical devices into one group. Um, they could be in different flows, connected to different APs. Um, you don't have to have you know, trombone the traffic to a centralized controller to enforce all the policies. Uh, you know, with a magic, we can make that happen at the at the AP. So, so okay, let's so let's determine again. This is going to be the how stupid can I get question. Can this be a VXLAN? And will there be with full like bum replication where I can if I've got users in two buildings and I give one, I give them the same PSK and for whatever reason their application requires layer two connectivity. It'll all it'll all just Absolutely. Okay. And Kumar again, I do not recommend this. I said it's <laughs> yeah. stupid. I said it's stupid for a reason, but sometimes. Yeah, yeah. VXLAN, yes. Uh, so Kumar is going to talk detail about um, the, the VXLAN uh, architecture, but yes. Yeah. Awesome. Bump traffic optimization. Yeah, uh, Kumar will talk okay. more. So another question, um, and, and the other vendors haven't, but maybe you have found the magic fix. WPA3? Yes, it works. Yeah, that's the other one that I want to mention. It works. Uh, WPA3 works as well. Uh, we have, um, um, you know, I know without WPA, downgrading it to WPA two, without yes, so without uh, you know doing the cracking. Um, so there's there's a there's a way you know uh, how we do it, and uh, I'm happy to uh, you know chat offline and discuss you know how we do it. But yes, we have solved for WPA three as well. This works for WPA three, even with randomized MAC addresses. Uh, even with yeah, even with randomized MAC addresses. And and we'll talk about how we how we do it, uh, you know. Offline. And that's again, that's one of our you know unique differentiators with with UPSK. Okay. Definitely interested to yeah, learn yeah, how you do that. Yeah, yeah. So coming back, uh, I think uh, what uh, uh, Sriram talked about is basically uh, for uh, uh, for a, an organization with uh, diverse types of uh, IoT devices. For example, we have a healthcare customer who has like you know multiple categories of uh, IOMT devices, and they want private network for each of these, and they have configured some twelve SSIDs, uh, you know, for separating out the different types of devices. But with Agni, uh, on the administrator side, you can create client group and put each of these type of devices in a particular client group, and they'll get their own unique PSKs. So when the clients connect, they'll again, pro uh, you know, using their unique PSKs, they can form a private network. Uh, for each of these client groups. And last but not the least is what Pagya already mentioned, the scalability, uh, because Agni is managing the UPS case, you know, we can scale up uh, to a very high number. So next I'm going to show a, a short demo where the end user can actually log in to their self-service portal and they can uh, authenticate and uh, they get the unique PSK and using that PSK, they can automatically connect their uh, client devices. And uh, also we'll show the client isolation and the sharing feature. So playing the demo here. So in this case, the administrator is configuring a wireless network 
of type of UPSK, and he has turned the user private networks option and has also uh, added the shared client here. And after creating the network, an onboarding URL gets generated. So this gets sent to the, uh, the end users uh, via email or text messages. And here the end user logs into the self-service portal using his SSO credentials. So once successfully authenticated, the user will actually uh, land on the self-service portal where he can see the wireless network name where he needs to connect to, the passphrase that he needs to use, and that's what he's doing. He's actually going ahead and connecting to the network uh, using the passphrase. So this prevents all the onboarding flow where you have to connect using a common PSK and then the, uh, get a unique PSK. So unlike other vendors, we can actually just use the, uh, this particular feature and connect to the network uh, directly. The user can have multiple clients. So we have uh, simplified by uh, showing a QR code and the user can simply scan the QR code to connect any of his uh, mobile clients. So uh, coming back to the administrator screen, we can see that uh, this person, user Mark, has actually authenticated two of his clients and both are successfully connected. So in the next, what we are trying to show is the user isolation feature. So in this case, Mark has two clients, right? And they are connected using the same PSK. So ideally, they should be able to talk to each other. And that's what we are trying to show using Ping that uh, both the clients are able to communicate with each other. But there will be some other user, uh, Bob in the network, who is also connected to the same SSID, but using a different PSK. So because of this client isolation feature, user Bob should not be able to talk to user Mark. And this is what we are trying to show here. So on the, on the right side, if you see, we have added a shared client. So in a university campus, uh, there may be, uh, I mean, there'll be some printers and all the students will need access to such shared clients. And so they are connected to the same SSID using their individual PSKs, but they can still access the shared client. So in, uh, in, to conclude, basically, Arista's uh, UPSK solution along with Agni uh, can uh, basically can replace uh, the traditional static PSKs for any network that requires security, scalability, and isolation capabilities. So with that, we come to the end of the UPSK demo. Uh, the next thing I would like to quickly show is the client journey. Uh, you had the question about how uh, we can actually kind of troubleshoot from CVQ itself. So uh, here what I'm trying to show is basically in CVQ, we know we can get more details into why a client was not able to connect to the network. And uh, all this while we were seeing only an authentication, radius authentication failed. But what is the reason of the failure? So this is what we are fetching from uh, from Agni, all the, the, the radius authentication details, uh, the failure details, and that we are going to show here. So by just like clicking on the view details and we'll see what is the radius authentication type and why it failed. It could be because a UPSK, uh, the PSK mismatch, or it could be a certificate revocation error. So basically from the client journey page, we can get a 360 degree view of uh, the network infrastructure as well as the network identity. So with this, I will hand it over to Bhagya, who is going to talk about uh, how to how easy it is to troubleshoot uh, from Agni using AI ops. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you, Suparna. So uh, quickly, I'm going to go through one of the troubleshooting demos. Um, let me get back. So one of the salient features of uh, Agni, what we have added is uh, you know uh, Askeva. Askeva is uh, autonomous virtual assist that helps you to troubleshoot with a conversational uh, human style languages. So when we spoke to the customers in the past, uh, based on the past experience of interacting with uh, you know, several of the NAC uh, deployments and customers from the last 10 to 15 years, two things customer mentioned. So uh, you know they spend an equal amount of time in troubleshooting and observability of a product because configuration is a very minimal thing. You know It will happen in the first few weeks of uh, deployment. And the second aspect, what I also mentioned is, uh, at the time of troubleshooting, you know they need much more flexibility in in providing uh, details about the user, the context, and the location, and all the sorts of details. And when they try to do in some of the products, uh, instead of troubleshooting, the intention is to troubleshoot the user failure, but they ended up uh, you know bringing down the system or increasing the low latency, increasing the latency, 
uh, and other aspects, primarily because of, uh, you know, when there are millions of rows in a system and you craft, uh, you provide a flexibility for customer to craft uh, some of the queries, it may end up uh, doing something wrong. So with this, what does Ask Eva provide? So you can, you can ask simple question like, you know, how is my network? So uh, the system, what it does is it, it looks at all the, you know, authentication uh, failures in your system, if there are any, and it automatically analyzes why the system is failing and what is the recommendation as an administrator you should do and all these things with a simple question about asking, you know, how is my network performing and if there are failures, why is it failing? And if there is a recommendation, uh, what about uh, how, how you can troubleshoot it as well? And you can ask questions about, you know, uh, tell me about Alice. So Alice is a user, you know, who authenticates to the network. The system takes this uh, conversational uh, input and translates it into a specific user you know, that has authenticated, not just from one device. In this case, it also brings uh, a complete detail about all the other devices the user is using, what are those sessions and what are those devices and how, you know, uh, the system uh, or the Alice is authenticating. To know more, uh, you know, this is the in-depth information. And uh, uh, another thing is we provide complete visibility of, uh, uh, you know, who authenticated from that specific device. In this case, the same device is also used by another user, Superna. Right, so the Alice used this device at this time and it had an IP address and you know it was used by someone else. So all these visibility you know, pertaining to that specific device you huh. can get. So, yes. It, you say it detected, okay, so somebody had an IP and then somebody else had the same IP. Is that what it's gonna? Uh, no, the, this one is I choose a device matching this MAC address. This MAC address was authenticated by a user Alice. At that time it had this IP. The same device was also authenticated by a different user at some point of time. So you get a visibility of a device to multiple users. You know, think of this scenario in a in a lab or in a library. The same device used by a user one and a user two, and you know, uh, so you get that visibility as well. So in that uh, in that conversational interface, yes. uh, while it's kind of typing out, is it still processing during that time, or is that just an animation? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a combination of both uh, because uh, it. Uh, what happens is it's a dynamic query. So we craft, we take the sentence, and you know, first identify the intent. Once we identify the intent, we extract the queryable object. In this case, you know, the user object and the device object. Depending on what input you provide, we provided the list of, uh, you know, the device in this case. But when you click the device, yeah, we take and execute a few more queries. So it's a combination of, you know, we have some information to present to the user, and we also have some information based on the user input, and you go and query, and, you know, you construct that response and render it back to the administrator. So that's how it works. So, yeah, this is what I have to show, and all these things are possible because of, uh, you know, Arista's uh, state-of-the-art uh, ML and AI technology that is powering this interface, and at the same time, uh, yeah, uh, the NetDL architecture also that is powering, that is hosting a lot of data, uh, because Agni knows a lot more data, the device data, the user data, the, uh, you know, what we have collected as a part of concourse applications, and all those things is we are actually providing as a service to the customers the power of uh, GPU, TPU, and the computation, and the fees, the extensibility of troubleshooting and is, is actually extended to the customer. And all this with the same license, what you purchased Agni for, and there is no special license is required to use uh, the Eva, Ask Eva. We have one question from, from Twitter, is uh, Agni support open roaming and easy roam? So, uh, great question. So, open roaming and edge roam are a very powerful use cases when it comes to the university. So, it is a work in progress as we speak, and that is something we will support uh, as a part of this uh, product roadmap. Thank you.